Another index that is useful to select uh, interesting concepts in large layers is concept probability. One problem with stability is that small intents are usually more stable than large intents. But this is just because small sets are more likely to be closed. So the idea behind concept pro probability is to actually compute how likely is it that a certain intent is indeed an intent, that it is closed. Okay, so let's define something that is that we call naive probability of an attribute set being closed. We have a formal context, GMI, and for each attribute M, we denote by PM the probability of an arbitrary object having the attribute M. Uh, how can we, where can we get this probability from? Well, maybe it's given a priori. So maybe we know that the probability of this attribute is uh, 0 0.3. Maybe this comes from some background domain knowledge that we have. If this is not the case, then we can estimate this probability by simply looking at the frequencies of attributes. And we can say that PM is uh, the frequency of uh, attribute m in our context. So the number of objects that have attribute m divided by the number of all objects, by the size of g. Okay, and this is where the naivety comes from. pb denotes the probability of an object having all attributes from the set b. And we compute it simply by multiplying uh, individual probabilities of attributes from B. Um, so this is naive, because here we assume that attributes are independent of each other. So if they're independent, this is a correct definition for uh, probability of a set B. So we assume that attributes are independent. We compute the probability of an attribute set being closed. And if it turns out to be low, so the probability is low, but the set is still closed. This means that this is not by chance, that they, these attributes from this set, they do indeed have something in common. They're not independent from each other. So that's the intuition behind the notion we're going to define next. So by n, we denote the size of g, and this is how we compute the probability of a set b being closed. So the probability of B being equal to B double prime. Well, the probability of B being equal to B double prime is the sum of the probabilities of the event B equals to B double prime and the size of B prime is K, where K goes from zero to N, where N is the, the size of, of the object set. So how do we compute this? Well, how do we compute the formula under the sigma, under the sum sign? There are n over k ways to choose k objects from n objects. For each such choice, uh, we need to compute the probability that these are precisely the objects that have b, uh, that have attributes from b. So first of all, all of them, all of these k objects must have all attributes from B. Uh, so we have PB raised to the power k. This is the probability that all of these k objects have all attributes from B. Then it's also important that all the other objects that are not among these k objects, they don't have at least one attribute from B. So it, it's not true that they have all attributes from B. And 1 minus PB is the probability of an object not having all attributes from B. So we raise this to the power n minus k because that's the number of objects that remain. Uh, also, it's important for B to be closed uh, that these object, these k objects don't share any other attribute which is not part of B. 
So PM to K is the probability of all K objects having attribute M and 1 minus PM to K is the probability that uh, at least one of the K objects doesn't have uh, this attribute M. So we go, so we iterate over all attributes outside B and we multiply these probabilities. And then we multiply all of this together and we sum over different values of k and we get the probability of b being closed. Well, the idea here is that if we see a concept that has a low probability, well, if it has a low probability, it shouldn't be there, but we still see it, we still observe it. Then it means that there's something about its attributes that really connects them together. So it has a low probability under the assumption that uh, attributes are independent but we observe this concept. This means that our assumption is probably incorrect. And so these attributes, the attributes of this concept are not independent. There's something that makes them connected to each other. Well, this notion of probability alone is not enough to filter out noisy concepts, but it can be used to see some interesting concepts and it could be combined with other criteria to remove noise and to find concept interesting in some sense. So let's look at our zoo data set. Uh, let's look at those concepts at the least probable concepts that have size at least two. So these are the extents of these concepts. Wasp and honeybee. Well, it really makes sense to group them together. Chicken, dove, parakeet. These are birds which are in a way similar to each other. Sea lion and seal, well, that's almost the same thing, and so on. We can also raise the threshold on the extent size to, let's say, five, and then the least probable concept is going to be this one. Pussycat, pony, reindeer, girl, goat, and calf. Well, it's a little bit strange why, why girl is part of the zoo, but for some reason it is in this data set. Uh, the intent is hair, tooth, cat size, backbone, domestic, milk, and breathes. So this concept is interesting in probably a different sense. It is really strange. First of all, we can see that a girl is here and it shouldn't be there. So maybe there's some, maybe there's some, um, error in our database. And why reindeer is classified as domestic? Well, maybe it's not an error. So this concept is certainly interesting and probability uh, lets us see it.